Lord Raven, finally. I'm so excited. Man, this guy has been on a journey. We ordered him like a month ago. Yeah, he got lost in shipping and we called and they shipped him again. He got lost again. Then they overnighted him to us. It wasn't actually overnight. It was actually like five days later, but. Overnight. <laughs> he finally arrived and. The Lord Raven saga has been ongoing and he, we haven't even opened the box yet. So we're gonna unbox it, put it all together, show you how it works and then Give him a makeover. We're gonna make Lord Raven the bird lord he was truly meant to be. <laughs> this is a large box. So this guy stands six feet tall when he's all said and done. He lunges forward and does this kind of like cool movement with his arms and head. His eyes light up as well, so that should be pretty cool. They even wrote a story on the back. What does the story say? Deep in the dark mountains of the Black Hills, the Lord Raven awaits his next victim. I just think it's so cool. But let's find out what's inside. His mouth moves. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, he talks. <laughs> Deep in the black hills, I'll pick your bones clean. Is this a beard? Like what it says. <laughs> He's got like a raven beard. I think it's probably supposed to be feathers. <laughs> He's got like a feathery chest. <laughs> Lord Chinbeard. Don't laugh at Lord Raven. He'll get his revenge on you. I think arms? these are arms. Yeah. They must be arms. So it's got a metal pole inside and like a foam thing. So it actually has form. These are getting better. I have to give them credit for that. <laughs> they cost more, but at least they have form, you know? The Lord's clothes. That's not bad. It's got some bunch of little layers of creepy cloth. Okay, we can work with that. Absolutely. Oh, look at these. Those are cool. <laughs> Those are really cool bird hands. Pleasantly surprised with all the stuff so far. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, we got a base. Oh yeah, and this is probably his hood. And... That's a crazy mechanism thing. Oh, this is like his shoulders, because he's like this. Got like a hunchback? He's super hunched, yeah. I kind of want to plug this in and see how it works before we put it together. Okay. Just to, you know what I mean? Like just to watch it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this base has two poles and this has two poles and then there's these extender poles, which like raise him way up. But just cause I want to see how this works, I think we can just go like this. That totally worked. So it does have a motion sensor on it. How dare you enter my voice? Cool. So these control the arms and there's a motor right here and that spins around, which makes the arms go up and down. And then there's another motor right here and that controls the neck piece and that makes his neck go like back and forth. Holes, base, goes around this way. Pull this guy. And then the shoulders go on. Oh, no, he's backwards, but that's fine. We'll turn him around. Yep. Ooh, okay. All right, so far so good. Mm -hmm. Slip the costume over the upper torso. Okay. Just go under all this stuff. You can go from this side. Got the standard two pin connectors here, which is pretty simple. <laughs> all right. There's pins inside here. Ravens don't have thumbs, so. Yeah, but this would be like a thumb. Head time? Head time. This little neck beard. It's a little ridiculous. <laughs> okay, where are those cords at? It's really hard to see back here. You're like a spooky blue color. <laughs> Do you want to put a little motion sensor through his motion hole? <laughs> his motion hole? <laughs> I feel like this is in an appropriate place. There we go. Oh, kind of Velcro's on. The motion hole. The motion hole. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, this thing is massive. It's definitely the biggest one we've messed with so far. It's a little intimidating, to be honest. <laughs> it's cool. I'm ready to turn it on. All right. How dare you enter my voice? It's how you look at things you and turn back now. Wherever you run, my crows and I will find you. Well, I think this is really neat, if I'm honest. Of all the animatronics we've messed with so far, I think he's the closest to having like... Just cool out of the box. Yeah, totally. I mean, he was not cheap, there's that. He's definitely the most expensive one that we've picked up, but there's multiple sort of motors doing different things. The audio actually doesn't sound horrible, which sometimes it does. Mm -hmm. So that's encouraging. I think we can do a lot with this thing. Do you have any idea what we're gonna do? Nope, nope. We have to go brainstorm. Yeah. <laughs> So we've been brainstorming and we love him, but he's just a little bit plain for our tastes and we want to make him super detailed 
and give him like this really cool dark sorcerer vibe. To do that, we're gonna give him a new costume. We're gonna do some paint work. Biggest change though, is we're gonna take these and turn them into actual wings and then give them some separate arms. One that's like, ah, and the one that's maybe even like holding a staff or something. What's the first one like? Ah. <laughs> something like that. It's gonna do something cool. If you kind of imagine these up here, these are gonna be the wings. So instead of the wings being like this, we can kind of extend them outwards and make him absolutely massive. So I don't know how we're gonna make wings. We'll figure, we'll figure that out later. So for the arms, I think we can utilize this little structure right here. So if you look at the mechanism, it's just this top bar that's kind of pivoting on here. And this doesn't actually move. So I think we'll be able to attach the arms like that without really messing with or getting in the way of the wings which will rotate from here. Jamie had this idea to use this 12 gauge wire that we use for everything and bend them into these cool arm shapes that we can attach to this thing. Should be able to pass it through here, hook it just like that. I can then take a zip tie, put it on here. The zip ties are nice because this will never fall off, but at the end of the season, we can snip these off and we can store it more easily. The purpose of this little loop-de-loop -loop shape is that we can hook it down here for leverage, but it loops up so that, that puts the shoulder kind of up near the top so it looks, you know, like a normal shoulder. Otherwise, he would kind of look like this, which is not really what we want. We haven't made a staff yet, but we do have a broom. <laughs> What's proper staff holding posture? He's probably got his arm up a little. Kind of want to be like, you know. Okay. So I think what we want to come up like this. This broom is not going to be tall enough. No, it's no, you're right, it's not. No, we need a bigger broom. I found a bigger broom. Okay. Is that big enough? Yes. Okay, close enough? Yeah. We just kind of stuff this in here. It's weird that he doesn't have a thumb. Like, how is he going to hold? Is he cupping the broom? <laughs> It's fine, it's fine for now. This is, a, we're just, we're getting things, you know. He looks so weird. <laughs> He's gonna look real weird for a while. So just yeah. strap in. Okay. Okay? He's Something getting like there, yeah. You know, once we have all his clothes on, it's gonna Stop weigh it. Stop making my floors <laughs> dirty. How dare you spill on the floor? I think he needs clothes now because that's gonna start making him look more normal, like a person, <laughs> or bird, bird person. Time for Lord Raven to get some clothes. I think we can use the base of his outfit, but what I want to do is cut the sleeves off first, and then we're gonna have to cut the shoulders so we can re-velcro them back up there. Are you a bird? <laughs> There's a cleanup on aisle 12. <laughs> so what I'm kind of thinking for the middle is we could literally just wrap a bath towel around it and maybe just blue tape it. Okay. I feel like we could also do this with bubble wrap, but we don't have bubble wrap. Is that enough? I don't know. Yes, yes, it's enough. Okay. We have access to all the control thingies here still. Like I don't want to get anything in the way of the moving parts. What and then about? the skirt part, we're gonna fill that out too, but again, that can be done later. I got a bunch of different shades of blue. These are all gonna be tattered and layered on top of him. And I got this really cool red, and we're gonna have like, I don't know what to call them. They're gonna be accent strips that are like hanging down. Something of a shirt. I'm gonna glue everything together with fabric glue. Hot glue is my usual method, but I saw this at the store. I'm like, that might be fun. So that's what we're gonna try. I'm gonna pin it first and then kind of glue down. The beard has gotta go. What? It's time. The neck beard has yeah. to go? Yeah. Maybe right. we can reuse it somewhere else, but <laughs> it's in my way. Oh man, that's glued on there. Here. Give him a little. <laughs> now he's like a mohawk. I like the mohawk. That's much better. <laughs> Look at that. I kind of like the It's mohawk. like a mullet. <laughs> That's going to grow on me. The best thing about this glue is it doesn't burn me. It doesn't. <laughs> I love his hair. It's the best. All right, we got done making all of our little fabric strips. I love them because they kind of look like feathers to me. So it's like this tattered feathery cloth skirt thing. I think it looks amazing. I just don't know if we're gonna have enough of them. This thing is just so big. There's so much surface area to cover, so. The plan is to layer them on. So we'll start at the bottom and then overlap them kind of like shingles on a roof. And then we'll pin them and glue them. I guess if we don't have enough, we can always go buy more fabric. <laughs> So 
So he's a bird, he needs a lot of feathers, right? But you know, it's not humane to use real feathers and even fake feathers are actually kind of expensive. So Jamie had this really brilliant idea to use artificial leaves and we're gonna paint them to kind of look like feathers. And we've also got these slightly smaller ones, which I think are kind of gonna go like, I don't know, somewhere on him. <laughs> but we're gonna paint them black and then kind of see what they look like after that. Okay, your feather idea, amazing. <laughs> Leaf feathers. And you know what the cool thing about them is? There's like this little bit of wire in there. So like if you wanna shape your feathers. Oh, no way. You totally can. What are we gonna do with them? We wanna make a collar out of these feathers. So like imagine he's got a bunch, kind of like this. It goes like that. And he's got this cool like collar thing. So this is our little collar base. It's literally just cardboard that we taped together. This is not a prop that's gonna go outside in the rain. Like if it is raining, we're gonna have to bring it inside. We're gonna hot glue the feathers onto here and then this will kind of just sit right up there. Is it working the way you expected? Oh yeah. Finally no. something's working right. <laughs> this looks really cool. There we go. That's cool. Before we put any accessories on, we want to weather the clothes with some paint. To do the paint, I think what I want to do is actually use like a gloved hand and like just mush it on. I saw it on YouTube and it looked really good, so. So you're going to finger paint. We're going to finger paint. <laughs> and also there's just, there's so much cloth here and a brush would take forever. That is definitely my new favorite way to weather clothes. It was so fast, so easy, and it looks Amazing. Why didn't we ever think of that before? I don't know. We've done this so many times. Thank you, YouTube, for teaching us. The actual paint job on the hands themselves is actually pretty good, so we're gonna leave those alone. But the nails, the paint's kind of chipping off there, and we want them shiny black. So we're gonna use a black enamel and just give them a coat on his nails. A little manicure. It's Friday. And this video comes out Sunday. Sunday morning it comes out. And I've got at least a day of editing to get this video done. There and is so much left to do. Yeah, I'm panicking. We've never made wings before, but we're gonna use these poles, which used to be his arms, and they'll attach up here and somehow turn into wings. But you keep saying you have a plan. Well, I saw, I watched a plan. I watched An someone idea. else's plan. So, okay. Would you say that we're winging it? Okay, so Stilt B, super talented prop maker. He has a method of making wings out of polyethylene foam and pool noodles. Polyethylene foam is the stuff that you put underneath like laminate floors and pool noodles are, you know, pool noodles. <laughs> and one of the things that's particularly nice about his method is he uses the heat gun to bond the pool noodles and all of the foam together, which means there's no glue, which means we don't have to wait all day for stuff to dry because we don't have any time to wait. And, and, and it's very light because yes. it's just pool noodles. These are so cool. I love them. <laughs> and they're so light. Yeah. This doesn't even and weigh one pound. That. Look at that movement. Should we put them on? Yeah. This is so awesome, you guys. This makes me just want to go make like massive creatures with like huge demon wings and stuff. Right? I also want to make like my own wings. Yeah, you want to? Okay. Yeah. Definitely check out Still Beast tutorial. Nice job. Thank you. You too. It's finally time to wrap this guy up. 
Unfortunately, we did not have time to make a giant glowing wizard staff because this video comes out tomorrow and it's not even done yet. So <laughs> if you want to see another video where we make a, a big staff like that, let us know in the comments. We've got a bunch more accessories to finish him up, so let's go ahead and check out his final form. Thank you all again so much for watching. If you want to see more prop makeovers, we have a ton on our channel. And until next time, stay wicked. Thank you.